2024 Inglis Australian Easter Yearling Sale was an outstanding event in the global thoroughbred breeding world, highlighted of course by the sale of the first daughter of the mighty Mare Winx. But there were plenty of other highlights for industry investors, for buyers, for people who just love seeing these gorgeous young thoroughbreds strutting their stuff here at the Riverside Stables. Congratulations to you and the whole English team on an incredible sale. We know, of course, the Winx really, which we will, of course, get to very shortly, was an absolute highlight for $10 million. But so many other great stories for vendors, buyers, you know, your whole team here. Everyone really had a great two days. Yeah, thanks, Caroline. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled. Um, there was a lot of pressure with a filly um, out of Winx to sell. You know, we marketed it to the world. Our team did a great job. The Coolmore team did a fantastic job in presenting her and, um, you know, it was dealing with the owner, ownership group. You know, it's difficult for them, a high pressure situation. Uh, but all of it came together really well. I couldn't have imagined a result any better. Yeah, I mean, the, the overall stats, like this is obviously just at the end of the sale, average 432,000, median 300,000, and, you know, around about that 80% clearance mark, of course, once some of the pass-ins are done. So what's, what's your, your immediate sort of reaction at the end of the sale? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked, honestly. <laughs> um, that's a record average and probably a record median. The gross is not quite a record, but um, it, it's up 12 million on last year, and last year we were celebrating and dancing around the place. So the results are fantastic. Even taking out the $10 million filly, you know, the sale would have been up on last year. Not many people would have been predicting that. I think very few sales this year across the board have been up. Look, it's all come together really well, and, and as I said, couldn't be happier. Last chance. Done. <laughs> to think that uh, we have this mayor uh, today who has had a foal and now a yearling by Piero and such a good looking filly for the behind the scenes of what we went through to get here today. It couldn't happen without the most understanding owners. They grew up beside us uh, in our farms were together uh, in the Hunter Valley. And I've known Debbie since I was young and they have been so good to us. I didn't come here to buy this horse originally. We put her up for auction. And then in the last few weeks, all of the family, we started to miss our daughter, <laughs> granddaughter. So. We just decided that um, as best we could, if we could get her, we would. Um, I am privileged to have been able to secure this filly on behalf of my family, to be able to hopefully see if she can get to the racetrack. If she can't get to the racetrack, she'll be an amazing mum. She's Australian forever, and she's going to be just fabulous. So thank you everybody for all your love and care for this beautiful horse. Hopefully she'll do a Winx, but look, Can it we... doesn't matter if she doesn't. Well, talking about the Piero Winx lot, 391, $10 million. I mean, we saw all week here and prior, you know, in our preview, the amount of interest in her on social media, uh, all the inspections this gorgeous filly had here at Riverside. There was so much hype leading up to it. What was your experience of that? I mean, we heard, you know, John Stewart, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute too with the bidding. But before the sale, you know, this was something really unseen before, wasn't it? It is insane. And the days leading up to the sale, in fact, weeks leading up to the sale, constantly seeing stories in the news bulletins around the Winx filly sort of puts pressure on you every time you see one. You think everyone's going to be watching. We really need to get this job done. Uh, but it also made her top of mind uh, with everything we're doing. And so all of us were scouting out, looking for potential uh, bidders on, on the Winx filly, people that may not normally 
support our sales, but might be interested with a collector's item, and that sort of led to John Stewart. Yeah, well, coming into the ring, of course, you know, the, you know there's just the hush, even a couple of lots before. The auditorium was packed, you know, we, we've not seen it like that before. And so many people were here because it is a part of history. You know, she was such a champion, four Cox plates, and, and Coolmore, as you said, have done a great team. But, but the, the excitement of her in the ring, and, and Jonathan Darcy just doing a great job, as always, to sell this filly for 10 million. Yeah, it was exciting, wasn't it? And, you know, there was strong bidding uh, from all the parties involved. And I, although I was on the phone um, um, bidding on behalf of a client, I could hear the oohs and the ahs each time. It was like a game of tennis, someone hitting the <laughs> ball across the net. <laughs> a million here, a million there, and off it went. Yeah, I can't wait to, to watch some replays of all of it because it was, it was a great moment, but I was a little distracted uh, at the time with all of that going on. Uh, but something is very hard to replicate, as you know, Caroline. I mean, horse sales are not just about the selling of horses and the transaction side of it. It's about the theatre. We said that for a long time. It's why we built the sales auditorium the way it is. It's, it's set up like a theatre with an sta elevated stage uh, for that that type of experience, and I think we delivered that today. Yeah, and your client was there right to nine million. We saw the, the shake of the head and everything. And Deb Kapitas, what a great result for her with Wapit Bloodstock. I mean, obviously, to explain to people that don't understand, you know, there are, there are several owners in Winks and, and selling the filly, but Deb was just determined, only in the last few days, apparently, to, to keep this girl she loves so much. Yeah, that's right. Look, I mean, there were three ownership groups in Winks. Uh, there still are three ownership groups. And of course that meant three, three ownership groups in the filly uh, produced by Winx. They took a view the best way to proceed was to put it through the ring. And if any of the current owners wanted to buy out the others, they could. And of course we marketed it to potential buyers around the world. So it's a very fair and a transparent process. We saw that today, it's all on camera, everyone can see. And in this case, um, you know, I'm delighted that Deb's been able to buy that filly outright now mm -hmm. rather than owning 33 and a third she she now owns 100 percent mm -hmm. of the filly with her family and god bless them you know they, they they you know they just love the industry they're great investors they stay in our beautiful william inglis hotel mm -hmm. uh, for the week leading up to the sale and uh, you know great outcome for her yeah, she's the last person standing at three million, how was the phone? I sell inside, I'll take your one. Looking at some of the other top lots, I mean, three million dollars, of course, for the Vinny I Am Invincible Booker filly. So John Stewart, he he was still spending up big despite missing out on the the top lot there, and that was also through Coolmore. But again, you know, we're talking about a Group One winning mare, and I Am Invincible, the the dual champion Australian sire, is the second top lot of the sale. Yeah, that's right. Um, look, John loved her. I mean, I should point out that John did fly down here. I, I met him in Kentucky and then he flew down for, for the slipper and he was able to look at some horses whilst he was here. He didn't really know about the sale uh, until I met him over there and he brought it on to his attention. He was coming for the slipper, mm -hmm. so it was opportunistic for him to look at some horses and that, that's one, of course, that he looked at. And yeah, he, he was thrilled to be bidding on a filly, a filly of that sort of quality. It was a bit tricky, you know, he was bidding on the Winx filly with, at, at, at his place with a room full of people and we've seen videos yes. of all of them <laughs> you know they they, uh, they had sail day live on their on, on on a large television and it's just people from everywhere i think even people from other auction houses in, <laughs> in lexington Got in on the action? yeah they're all there after the races in keelan um and 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 watching that and so when he missed out, um, they all went home, like 1.30 or 2 in the morning. And then so I said, are you still interested in the book of Philly? Yes. <laughs> and I got a reply, yes, I'm in bed, but I'm happy to bid. So he was bidding whilst in bed, 2.20 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Uh, in his pajamas, uh, bidding on the filly <laughs> to me on the phone. So he felt a great connection between two continents and two you know, major racing jurisdictions. And he thought that that connection is something really special and he wants to keep uh, keep keep doing and, and getting other people uh, to to experience yeah great for the industry absolutely and lot 227 third top lot the zoo star prompt response filly we showed this gorgeous girl in the the paddocks there at Widden stud strutting her stuff she was always a beautiful filly again you know wonderful race filly prompt response but 2.2 million at uh, to james harron of course coming off the back of espionage when in the kindergarten stakes john camilleri of course is is one of the best breeders in the country bred winks as, as we as we know james harron got a great eye uh, for, for yearlings in general. Um, he's probably known for buying colts initially, but he's certainly now buying these lovely fillies for clients as well, for boutique breeders. 
Yeah, great to see that result yesterday. Top lot of the day. Andy oh, Thompson and his crew are winning. You know, I mean, they're all high fiving and celebrating. I think it exceeded their expectations, the and they were delighted. But so well deserved. And I mean, the Zoo Star fillies, they, they can't do any better. The Zoo Star fundamentals was the next top lot, 1.9 from Sejinho to to Tom Magnier. But when you look at the this end of the sale, obviously size list, Zoo Star is on top just at the moment from I Am Invincible and Snitzel. Obviously, there are passing lots could change. But seriously, what an incredible result! 18.7 million at the end of the. Sale for Zoo Star. Yeah, that's right. I mean, great result for Zoo Star. Uh, Vinnie's around 18 million and, and Snitzel as well. They're all within 800,000 of each other. Um, so delighted. I'm not, I think it might be the first time the Zoo Star has been on the top of the averages um, at this sale. But as you say, with a few passing lots, that could change. But three leading stones, and they really have driven this sale Zoo Star, Snitzel, and I'm Invincible. And yeah, the market just can't get enough of them. And buyers, of course, whop it with the, the one lot, so whop it bloodstock. But China Horse Club Newgate with Go Bloodstock and Trilogy, a good spread of buyers, really, really great people supporting the industry. I think that shows how healthy it is, Caroline, because nobody dominated. You know, last time, you know, when we were setting records 10 or so years ago, you'd have buyers spending 10 million, uh, sorry, 10 or 20 million, in some cases 20. Um, at Easter, but you know, we, we don't have that. We're not relying on one big buyer I mean, an example would be Yulong last year. I think you know they may have spent 12 or 13 million from from memory, uh, but I don't think they purchased it this sale. The sale still carried on without them, and you know they had a great sale as a vendor. I think Yulong, and we really appreciate their business, and we always love it when they're buying. But I think we've shown the resilience that if they're not buying for whatever reason that might be we can still carry on and someone steps in to fill, to fill those shoes. Mm, it's a very even spread, isn't it? And then finally, the leading vendor, Coolmore, coming out on top. Um, even without the $10 million Winx filly, they came out on top, which was fabulous to see. Uh, Arrowfield, Widden, Sejinho, Newgate, Yulong, all having great sales as well. So again, that really good spread of, of, you know, the people that are propping up the industry to a large degree. We need all the small breeders. You need, you know, everybody that, that's sort of maybe only buying, selling, breeding a small amount of mares. But, but the big players at Inglis Easter, this is what really supports the entire industry, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and, and we need that. And congratulations to Coolmore, Taimangu, the whole team. They have really, really stepped up. Their clients, the breeders on their farm that are, that are, that are boarding their mares there and having their yearlings raised by the Coolmore team. You can see that, I mean, the Wingsville is an example, but there's plenty of others that are using Coolmore to manage their yearlings and their brew mares and getting a great result. But we, we, we need all of those uh, large uh, breeders to support the sale and of course the, the small ones the, the larger ones tend to be able to do a lot of marketing on their own and so they add that extra element and, and give us that advantage so at the end of the sale and over it's having a deserved champagne and a beer and so on and back here again next year but it was just something else this sale wasn't it yeah it was i had a really good feel to it caroline and appreciate your coverage of the sale and and just the uh, support from the general public at large and if they're watching this show um, they should get involved. If they're not involved yet, get involved in some shape or form. Buy a share in a horse, race it, or, or get, get involved in breeding. Thank you very much for the competition. Great to have you all here.